We're back. Welcome to another edition of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast Cuss Out Sessions. It's me, it's Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt. I'm on my ones. And today, tonight, we've got a special one for you. Roger Harper and Miles Bascom. It's been announced today that they've been fired as West Indies cricket selectors. We got to get into this one. Come walk with me. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Big, big news, people. Big, big news. I wasn't even going to do this one, you know. I was going to leave it. I was going to wait till tomorrow to drop it. I was going to let it marinate a bit more before I jumped on the record. But you know what? The people called for it. The people, them, they called for it. So I said, come, let me drop this one. Let me drop this one today before uh, everybody else does a video on it. So... Big, big news. I haven't even got the uh, press release to read out, but you, it's, it's in the description. Um, it's it's in whatever link that you clicked. Harper, Roger Harper and Miles Bascom have been, their contracts have not been renewed. Now, whether you want to call that, that they've been fired by Cricket West Indies, that's a word I would use, but their contracts have not been renewed by Cricket West Indies and we are on the hunt for brand new selectors. In the interim, um, Phil Simmons will lead the selection committee along with the respective captains. So in the in the white ball teams, that will be Kyron Pollard and uh, red ball, that will, will be Craig Brathwaite. And they will be assisted or the process will kind of be um, gathered together, so to speak, by director of cricket, Jimmy Adams. That in itself is probably a podcast or a kind of cuss out session in itself. But that's the news. But we got to get into this. we got to break this one down. A lot of people seem to be rejoicing um, about Harper, particularly being removed. Probably a lot of people didn't even realise that Miles Bascom was also a selector. But um, the overwhelming feeling that I'm getting from speaking to people back home in the Caribbean or on the forums, online, is people going, well, good, it's about time, blah, 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 blah. But you know how we do, you know? You know how we do. My whole thing is we got to get into this. We got to go into the mixing pot. We got to add the season in and try and try and work out what the pros and the cons of this. First things first, though, am I surprised? No, no. Um, I think most people in the Caribbean or most West Indian fans expected this to happen. I mean, the uproar that came when when Johnny Grave announced the Harper and Cole were going to have their contracts extended till the end of the year because the selection, the the, the selection, the review of the selection process hadn't been completed yet. There was loads of uproar then. People like, how can they have it renewed? We've just come out of a World Cup where we flopped. How dare they renew it? And like, as usual in the Caribbean, nobody actually read the statement. Nobody actually listened to what Johnny Grave was saying. He said, we're extending it to the end of the year so that the review of the selection process can be completed and the recommendations made to Cricket West Indies as to what should happen. Clearly, those recommendations have been made and we have to assume that the recommendation was to, re to remove them. Without naming my sources, I, I had been tipped off earlier at the start of this week that this was going to happen. Um, but I I didn't tweet it. I didn't post it anywhere because I just wanted to see. I wanted to see if this was going to be the case. Santoki and I had spoken about it, so we kind of had an inkling this may happen, but um, it is what it is. A lot of you will be listening to this saying, well, do you agree with it? To be honest, I don't think I'm recording this video to say whether I agree with it or whether I disagree with it. All I'm going to record this video to do is to give balanced arguments um, about the decision. My personal opinion, 
and of course I could be wrong, my personal opinion is that this decision has been made to quiet down the media. That's my personal decision. I Even if you want to say that there was a review of the selection process and the people reviewing it, I think it was Philo Wallace one of them, could be wrong about that. But even if you want to say that an independent review of the selection process was carried out and recommendations were made, Roger Harper... Roger Harper's name in cricket media in the region was kind of mud. So I kind of felt this was going to happen regardless because Roger hadn't won the media over. Whether we, Even before you get to the public, Roger hadn't won the media over. You only have to look at certain publications in certain of the countries and islands to see that as far as, as, far as they were concerned, Roger had to take a lot of the blame for what has gone on. So I think it was obvious that this was going to happen. I, I, I still maintain that I'm not sure if the reason for it is the given reason. I, I, I still think that Cricket West Indies may have responded to, to media pressure, to fan pressure, that someone's got to be the full guy. Um, because what I'm going to do now is kind of just present, you know, like evidence. You know, the, the evidence, you know, the one thing that people often to love not to actually present when they when they give opinions on things. Have the West Indies digressed under Roger Harper's selection leadership? Remember, Roger Harper's not a coach. Um, he's not the coach. He's not a batting coach. He's not a this. He's not a that. He's head or lead selector or head of head of the uh, selector selection committee. Right. All three of them. Um, have the results got worse? So what I did was I pulled the results because I think if you're going to give your opinion on this, and I always say this to people who jump into the ads on Twitter or send me a message via Facebook or Instagram or whatever it might be, and anyone who's watching this fresh who doesn't know about Caribbean Cricket Podcast, um, of course you can follow us um, at Caribbean Cricket. Usually I have a banner to show. Here we go. You can follow us um, on Twitter, Instagram, at Carib Cricket. We're also on Facebook. Read the YouTube description below to find all the key places where you can follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. But I thought, let me first and foremost trawl through the results. Because surely with a selector, you're, you should be, you should be, if a selector is being having his contract looked at and a selector is having his performance looked at, it's got to be related to performance. Right. So I said, first and foremost, let me go look at the results. Does do the results justify removing Roger Harper? So in test cricket, since Roger Harper was appointed, remember the selection, um, the, the, the selectors, Harper, Simmons and Bascom were that could, that kind of threesome was put together in October 2019. So I'm looking at all of the results since they were um, since they were kind of appointed as part of the new selection process. In Test cricket, these are our results. Beat Afghanistan away 1-0. Lost away to England 2-1. Lost away to New Zealand 2-0. Beat Bangladesh away 2-0. Drew at home versus Sri Lanka 0-0. Lost away to South Africa 2-0. Drew at home versus Pakistan 1-1. Lost away to Sri Lanka 2-0. Now, on first listening, people just hear the loss, loss, loss and say awful. But then I said, let me put it in context. Let me put those performances in context. We've never played Afghanistan before, so that there's no context for that, but we beat them. Okay. And remember, in terms of the rankings, we've been where we've been near the bottom of the test rankings for time upon time upon time. We ain't hit higher than eighth or seventh since like when Sammy was captain. So everything in context, remember. Um lost 2-1 versus England in uh 2020 during that COVID tour, right? The last time we went to England, we lost 2-1 as well. So that's not a negative performance. That's the same performance, right? Lost 2-0 away to New Zealand. That's what happens every time we go to New Zealand. We never win in New Zealand. We haven't won in New Zealand since the glory days. So nothing new there. Beat Bangladesh 2-0 away. That was a historic um, performance. The last time we went, went to Bangladesh, we lost 2-0 actually. And we lost both of those test matches um, in three days under the previous selection committee, I hasten to add, headed by Courtney Brown and Cole. But we won in Bangladesh 2-0. So that's that's an up. That's an up. So, so far, one in Afghanistan, we've never played them before, so I'm willing to let that one slide. Lost to England away, same as before. 
Lost to New Zealand away, same as before. Bangladesh we won, not the same as before. That's an up. Drew at home to Sri Lanka, nil-nil. The last time Sri Lanka came to the Caribbean, we drew 1-1. So that's par. Lost at home to South Africa, 2-0. Nothing new. We haven't beaten South Africa in a test match since 1992. So that's nothing new. Normal. Normal. That's not an improvement. That's just the same. That's what happens when South Africa comes to the Caribbean. Drew at home versus Pakistan, 1-1. That's an up. Why? Because the last time Pakistan came to the Caribbean, under the previous selection committee, headed by Courtney Brown, we lost 2-1. So technically, drawing 1-1 at home versus Pakistan is an up. Lost 2-0 away to Sri Lanka. That's nothing new. We've never won a test match in Sri Lanka, ever. So that's nothing new, right? So when you break it down like that, have we improved in test cricket under the selection leadership of Roger Harper, arguably beating Bangladesh away and drawing at home versus Pakistan were things we did not do under the last selection committee. So when I'm hearing people quick to rush and say, damn, it's time, he's got to go, he's useless, he's picking the wrong players, you see me? You see, I don't react with emotion. My first response when I hear something is, let me go look at the stats. Let me go look at the facts. Let me pull the data and let me see how that relates to the the decision making. Arguably, Roger Harper and by proxy Phil Simmons as head coach could turn around and go, well, hold on a minute. Slyly, some results improved since 2019. Slyly, when you break it down, some results have improved. Now, before I get into ODI cricket and 2020 cricket, even in test cricket, you could argue that, remember, we've had COVID affecting, we've, remember, sorry, let me start again. We've had no red ball cricket in the Caribbean since February 2020. So we're now approaching two years of not anybody touching domestic red ball cricket. That's not excusing Harper. This video isn't out to excuse Harper. This video is out here to put some balance and context and let people weigh up things for themselves. It's um, it's to me, it's miraculous that the test team have won anything given we played no cricket other than test cricket, no domestic cricket. Yeah, of course, people are going to say those best versus best games, but they're waste games. OK, you could also argue that the selection committee have brought some new players onto the scene. Nkrumah Bonner, Carl Mayers, Josh De Silva, Jaden Seals are the four. Who you would, who I would talk about that they've brought onto the scene. You, you, you should also judge a selection committee by what new players do you bring in, and are are they able to cut it? Those four players, I would argue, have been brought onto the scene by the selection committee. They deserve to still be there. My criticism of the selection committee. Well, look at my last cuss out video. My criticism is some players within the test arena should be holding a big, big drop. And they're still there. That's where I criticise the selection committee in terms of test cricket. But again, you could put that in context of the fact that there's no Red Bull domestic cricket going on. So there's there's pros, there's cons. ODI cricket. This is the result since the, the new selection team are brought in. Uh, beat Afghanistan away, 3-0. Lost 2-1. Um, lost 2-1 to India away. We always lose in India, but 2-1, not a bad result. I think the last time we went to India, we lost 3-1. So lost two. So in fairness, that's more games, but we lost 2-1 to India. Um, beat Ireland 3-0 at home. Lost to Sri Lanka 3-0 away. A C team, some say D team, went to Bangladesh because everybody pulled out and lost 3-0. So we don't really count that one. Um, beat Sri Lanka 3-0 at home. And then lost at home versus Australia 2-1. Now, again, some will hear all the losses. So let's unpick the losses. Lost 2-1 to Indra away. That's creditable. Indra are a much better team than us. The 3-0 away to Sri Lanka, disappointing. I'll give them, I think that one's disappointing. The Bangladesh one, I'm not even counting that. Boy, let's not talk about Bangladesh. No, none of our players actually went there. Um, and then the Australia lost 2-1 at home. Actually, yeah, okay, it's a loss, but it was Super League points. They picked up one of the wins, so I'm not too upset with that one. Now, the context, though, for ODIs is you have to remember between 2015 and 2019, under the previous selection committee, we won zero. Remember, I always bring this up and it's always fascinating to me, the people who love to come and defend it. We won zero. Let me say it again. We won 
zero series in Ojai cricket between 2015 and 2019. Four years we won zero. We were so bad in OJ cricket, we didn't even qualify for the Champions Trophy in 2017. Something, again, that people often forget. You see, when people love to, like, say, oh, under Dave Cameron, we did this and this. I always say to people, but we never qualify for the Champions Trophy in 2017. No one ever loved, No one ever brings it up because our ranking was so low, we didn't even get invited. We didn't qualify. Remember, for the World Cup, we had to go through the qualifiers. We shouldn't have even made it to the 2019 World Cup because there was an LBW decision that was a teeth out versus Scotland. And then the rain came and saved us and we got through to the World Cup on technicalities. So we didn't even deserve to be at the World Cup in 2019. Right. We then got there and we sucked. Right. We won zero series between 2015 and 2019 so if we're going to cuss out the selectors and by proxy the head coach as well re ojai cricket we need to remember the context of we're coming from zero in ogi cricket so that's the context i'm not here to defend roger harper i'm just here to put context on things so where do i think this decision has come from then well it's obvious isn't it because it can't be based on test cricket it can't be based on odi cricket I think there are two big reasons that have resulted in Roger Harper losing his job. Yes, there's been a review of the selection process. Yes, I'm willing to accept that it was an independent review and that people have independently come to the conclusion that mm, this selection committee ain't up to it and they're not doing their job. But I still believe it comes down to two things. One, the World Cup. The selection of the World Cup squad is what caused all the consternation. If you look at the 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 discourse prior to the World Cup versus the discourse after the World Cup squad had been selected, that's when you started to really hear the volume of noise against the selectors. People weren't happy. I'm not talking about my opinion now. I'm just being neutral in this thing. I'm just saying what, what was going on. People weren't happy that certain and certain players were there. Chris Gale, Lendl Simmons, Ravi Rampal. They felt it was an old squad. They weren't happy that Jason Holder went as reserve. Um, who else? They weren't happy that Romario Shepard never got called up. Remember Guy Guyana's president saying, "Where was Romario Shepard?" That's a dunce. Anyway, you know what? Let me not even let me let me relax myself. A president, you know, trying to get into it, saying, "Where's X and X player?" But I'm going to talk about insularity later on because I'm getting tired of the insularity. You know, you see me. I'm a man where I'm just going to start calling people dunces and just leaving it straight like that. So. The, the 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 call for individual players, the cuss out over Holder not being in the 15, that's when the groundswell of opinion really shifted, properly shifted against Harper. And then because the World Cup was atrocious, there I'm calling it, I'm not defending him, the World Cup was poor. In fact, it wasn't poor, it was awful. It was awful, okay? They massively underperformed. That was the nail in the coffin for him. So despite me giving you the context for the test uh, matches, uh, the ODIs, e even if the World Cup, say we take the World Cup out of it, the T20 record was actually passable since 2019. In fact, it was a winning record. Up until the World Cup, the T20 record since 2019 was actually a winning record. The World Cup is what um, sent, sent everybody into a tailspin. So I actually believe that Roger Harper has lost his job and Miles Bascom based off the World Cup and all of the noise, they made a gut check call, right? They made a gut check call to go with Chris Gale. Chris Gale didn't reward them. They made a gut check call to go with Ravi Rampal. He was actually all right in the World Cup, you know, but again, people don't want to look at the stats and the facts. But people felt that Ravi Rampal wasn't worth it. They made a gut check call for Lendl Simmons. People felt that wasn't worth it. They left Holder out. People were in uproar about that. Chase didn't start the matches. People were in uproar about that. OK, so their whole tenure as selectors has ultimately, in my opinion, hinged on what happened in the World Cup. And that's what I believe the review of the selection process has ultimately decided. You flopped when it came to the World Cup and now you've got to go. But in tandem with that, I think that goes hand in hand with the ferocity of the media 
and then kind of I think this is a knee jerk reaction also to the media just not being happy. I'm not saying it's the media's fault. That's not my point. But I'm saying there was so much written about the World Cup squad and the and the performance was so poor that the combination of those two factors means how could you really turn around and renew their contracts? So I guess what I'm getting at is I'm not convinced um, the review process took everything into consideration. I think it's, re it's I suspect, and this again is my personal opinion, I suspect this is a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to what, what has happened at the World Cup. So what now? I've said that obviously, or Cricket West Indies have announced that it's going to be Phil and Craig slash Kieran for the respective uh, formats and then Jimmy Adams up until they appoint someone new. But this is what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what they do next. And there's several reasons why it doesn't matter what they do next. But the biggest reason is insularity. I keep telling people insularity will kill cricket in this region. Because whatever they do going forward for selection, if certain islands and countries don't see their people picked, they're making up a bag of noise. So it doesn't really matter who the select head selector is or who the selectors are, because some people judge your worth as a selector by if you are picking their players and by their players I mean from their country from their island remember we've said it on our podcast enough I've said it on these cuss outs enough too many people judge West Indies cricket with a with a look through the, the their eye is looking through their nation first before they look at actually West Indies as a whole see I Maybe I'm okay. I'm going to say something and you're going to say, no, that's a lie. I'm a Jamaican, proud Jamaican. I couldn't care less if the team's got Jamaicans in it. How much do you see me big up in Krumah Bonner? He's done well for West Indies this year, but I don't I don't promote in Krumah Bonner over promoting anybody else. In Krumah Bonner could be from St. Vincent for all I care. I just want to see everybody doing well. But I, I'm not convinced that enough of the voices in the Caribbean see things that way. I think they see things like selection through a nation eye first, which is why you can have a ridiculous situation like the president of Guyana saying, where's Romario Shepard? Rather than just say, mm, I've got a few concerns about this um, particular selection, you're focusing on where is the Guyanese player? Now, to, like that, that's not analysis for me. That's about just looking out for your own because you don't see enough analysis. And again, I always come for the media when I do these things. You don't see enough analysis within specific islands calling for players who aren't from their island. So, for example, we just toured Pakistan, right? Rather than someone say to me, where is XYZ player from their island or country? They should then therefore be saying, let's get Jaden Seals into the T20 side, irrespective of where you are hailing from, because Jaden Seals in the T20 side improves the T20 side. It doesn't matter that he's a Trini. Wherever you're from in the region, you should be able to see that. But whoever our selector is and whatever country or island they are from, you're going to see people bring that into the discussion like it matters. You see how people are being cussing Harper. Where's Shimron Hetmeyer? Where's Shimron Hetmeyer? And I want Shimron Hetmeyer around, by the way, in terms of uh, tests, T20s, ODIs, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But. You can't just keep calling for players like that without looking at the evidence of, well, has Shimron played any red ball cricket? Well, no, he hasn't. That's maybe why he's not in the test squad. I still want him in. But the point is you have to look at the context of things that you're asking for rather than saying craziness like Roger Harper, who is Guyanese, has a Guyanese bias. That don't make no sense. <laughs> God, it don't make no sense, man. Um, so insularity is going to be a big problem. No matter how Cricket West Indies choose to try and deal with this and who they choose to appoint next. Personally, I've been speaking to a few people. Do we even appoint a lead selector? Because of the level of insularity, is there, is there even any point in uh, appointing a lead, a lead selector? If anything, what Cricket West Indies should maybe be thinking about is, does this represent a golden opportunity to look at revamping the selection process in general? I would prefer to see a greater emphasis on scouts, a greater emphasis on 
data analysis, which I'm sure they're doing. But if I can critique with Cricket West Indies, they do not disseminate that information to the general populace and possibly to the media well enough so that when selections are made, that people can understand the justifications for why certain selections have been made. So here's an example. When the World Cup squad was selected, I believe that we on, Car um, on Caribbean Cricket Podcast did a better job of articulating to the fans why certain players had been picked. I think we did a better job than the selectors did. And that shouldn't be allowed. You could say that's me bigging us up, but I genuinely actually believe that. And that should never be the case. You should never be relying on people who are just some random people, us, on a podcast, being able to articulate why Ravi Rampal has probably been selected for the World Cup squad over a Romario Shepherd or a Jason Holder. It, you shouldn't leave it to people like us to be able to analyse the data, look at the stats and look at the facts and extract and extrapolate why this must have happened. And show the fans show the media what the specific data set, the specific reasons you're making the selections, and it might shut them up a bit more. Because rightly or wrongly, Cricket West Indies are allowing too much room for, um, again, it's too much room for insularity, too much room for suspicion, too much room for dunce arguments, because they're not filling the void with appropriate explanations. And that's on them. So more than the figurehead they put in, the positioners, lead selectors or selectors going forward, it's the process. Some say process. It's the process that they need to refine because you refine the process and you disseminate the process clearly, that quietens down the level of noise in the region. People want to know why things happen more than who's making the selections behind it because if they don't know the why, they'll attack the who. You see what I mean? So to me, that's more what needs to happen. Final few points. I'm, I've probably missed some stuff out, but you know, once I start, man, I'll get on fire and then I forget some of the things I wanted to say. But I guess final few points, I guess, need to be made um, uh, about this. And the other thing, the other reason why I think Harper probably actually went as well. And again, these are all my opinions. This isn't, this isn't me... Um, rabbiting or repeating something that somebody else has said, parroting, I should say, um, what somebody else has said to me. This is my opinion. The other reason why I think Harper has probably gone is, and this is with all due respect to Roger, okay? Roger wasn't the best in front of the media. Um, he got, I feel like he got rattled too easily by some of the media, whether they were trying to come for him with kind of like gotcha questions or whatever it might be. And again, I would say to Cricket West Indies, you've got to be more media savvy. And I just wonder if part of the reason to remove Roger was also about needing a selector who is media savvy. And that's why having Jimmy now be part of the interim process is probably the best thing they can do. Because the one thing I will give Jimmy credit for is Jimmy will front up in front of the media and is probably better at giving a bit more clarity for things um, when the media asks questions. And re remember, a lot of this stuff is a media game, you know. Um, you've got to be able to, as an organisation, we're talking about Cricket West Indies, but this could be any kind of business. You have to be better as an organisation at controlling the media narrative. Now, People could listen to this and go, but you should be counting yourself as a media. What do you mean you want to be controlled? But come on, this is the game. The game is the game. Organizations try to control the media narrative and Cricket West Indies by allowing themselves to be transparent, because I think some people forget under Courtney Brown and Cameron and that lot, you think we had this access. You think we had this access to understand anything about selection. Then man never spoke to anyone. They just told you what the, they just told you who was selected. And that was that. You think those people really spoke? That was like a, that was like a fiefdom. When, when when they were in charge. So I've said this before, Cricket West Indies are almost making a rod for their own back because they're, they're more transparent, but they're not controlling the narrative with this transparency. All they're doing is leaving themselves open to be cussed out by uh, media. And if that, and you see if, the, see if the, and you see if some of those media outlets are nefarious, well, boy, you're going to get soaked up. 
So they need to also think about whoever they appoint has got to be media savvy. And that's my criticism of Roger that I just felt like Roger wanted, sometimes I would go in those press conferences and I'd feel like Roger wanted to war the media. And of course, once you're trying to war the media, the media ain't going to report on you kindly. So they've also got to bear these things um, in mind as well. But just as the final point, as we come to the half hour point and I try and wrap this up, people, just remember one thing. <laughs> We've been changing selectors. <laughs> We've been changing selectors for the last 20 odd years. We've been changing players. We've been changing captains. We've been changing coaches. And how much improvement does it tangibly actually make? So really and truly, if you're sitting there tonight going, yes, Roger Harper's gone. Yes, the West Indies are back now. Sorry, you're a dunce. I'm sorry. You're a dunce though, isn't it? Because look over the last 20, 20, 21, 25 years. If you think West Indies cricket can be fixed by individuals, like the odd individual being removed here and there, no, it's no, sorry. It's deeper than that. It's really deeper than that. The one thing Skerritt said when he became president is, remember, they were carrying out root and branch reviews of everything to do with West Indies cricket, finance and governance, selection, uh, task force for this, task force for that. And I completely back that. Obviously, we've had COVID ravaging the world and COVID notwithstanding, but you cannot change anything in West Indies cricket unless you're willing to basically root and branch everything from top to bottom. So, yes, whether Roger Harper deserved to go or not, cool, whatever. But if you think that that is suddenly going to lead to glory days, no, no. What I would implore... Uh, Skerritt, Shallow and anybody who's got any kind of say in West Indies cricket is carry on with your root and branch review and implementation of a brand new cricket West Indies because nothing changes in West Indies cricket by removing just a few individuals here and there. Every single region um, in, the, in, in the Caribbean from JCA to uh, GBC or GCB to BCA across the region until all of them are invested in fixing uh, cricket within their particular islands and countries and and what am I trying to say here come with a unified forward facing outlook for West Indies cricket and that's from under 19 through to uh, senior teams the pitches the um the school structures, nothing really changes. And that's why I'm saying that some people are dunces for thinking suddenly this changes something if Roger Harper goes. That's just like a little cosmetic change. No real tangible change comes without a full overhaul of the system. So really and truly, we've got to be in this for the long haul and stop looking for or stop trying to think that a little cosmetic change here and there suddenly changes everybody's fortunes. But you know... As I say, you don't have to agree with me. You can agree. You can disagree. Whatever. You know how these cuss outs go. Get in the comments below. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Share this with anybody you think might want to listen to this. Um, cuss me. You know how I do. I'll still comment. I'll still reply to whatever your comments are. Um, share this with people in cricket associations across the region because nothing really changes if those people don't get their eyes on this, remember. Um, it's 25 years with we've been standing still or in the mud. Um, so we've got to have these kind of conversations. Forget the forget the applauding when one man goes. That's that, that that don't change nothing. We've got to have these type of conversations. I've been Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. This has been the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Cuss Out Sessions. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rule. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. 